A little while back, I made a video about the Fader Fox UC4 and why I think it's the greatest MIDI controller of all time. And many of you agreed. Some of you still don't know how it works. So let me show you how it works. Here we go. Your Fader Fox UC4 kicks off in controller mode right when you plug it in with group one as the default. In each group, there are 33 customizable controls you see here. Eight encoders or knobs, each with its own push encoder, so that adds another eight. Eight faders, eight buttons, and one crossfader for a total of 33, offering a rich array of command possibilities within your DAW. You can effortlessly switch between eight different groups, allowing for diverse mappings and configurations. To switch groups, hold down the gray edit setup key, which I will henceforth refer to as the gray key since it's the only gray key. Then press on the respective encoders or green buttons to change the group. This is great because not only does this open up 264 commands per setup, but you can very quickly switch between different groups of parameters, which is really helpful. All of these groups get saved into a top level folder of sorts called a setup. And if I hold down the shift key, then press the gray button twice to enter setup mode, we can see here that I'm in setup number one. Setups in UC4 are like memory slots, storing configurations from various groups. The UC4 offers 18 setups, each with eight groups, allowing a mix of fresh mappings and parameters. Me personally, I just use two of these. I have one setup for studio recordings and another for live performances, but it's all about finding what suits your workflow best. I don't use the other functions in setup mode very often, but in short, they include additional options for routing and copying and pasting sessions, groups, and control elements. If you'd like more information about this, please refer to the section titled setup mode in the manual, which I've provided a link to in the description below. Okay, so that's the basics. Let's get into the versatility of the UC4 by talking about edit mode. Edit mode is really where the UC4 starts to branch off from the normal capabilities of your everyday controller. This mode is where you can fine tune individual control elements such as encoders, buttons, and faders. It allows you to select and adjust various settings ensuring that each control works exactly the way that you want it to. To access edit mode, simply hold down shift and press the gray key once. Use the first rotary knob to select which encoder, button, or fader you would like to affect. Here you can see I have encoder selected, represented by ENC, which relates to the turning of the knobs. Then P button refers to the push button action of the knob. Button allows me to change settings for these green buttons down at the bottom. And faders is obviously for the faders. Selecting a control element grants access to various settings using the remaining seven knobs, with options on knobs two, three, and four changing based on the chosen element. So when editing an encoder, the second knob customizes the LED display, allowing for off, standard, zero to 127, or bipolar, negative 60 to 63 values, suitable for various parameters like volume and panning. The third knob configures the MIDI command type the encoder sends, adjusting it to your DAW or device's preference. I don't use this one that much, but it has options like CCR1, CCR2 for relative, CCAB for absolute positions, and PRGC for switching sounds or patches. And finally, for encoders, knob number four defines the acceleration or feel of the encoder, allowing for precise or rapid adjustments, such as quickly scrolling through values or fine tuning. Onto the push button settings, encoder number two has no settings on it. Encoder three configures the command type sent by the button, allowing for options like triggering notes, sending control changes, or turning it off for inactivity. Encoder four, when push button is selected, defines the command's nature, allowing for momentary actions like holding a note or toggling on off states, such as enabling or disabling effects. Now moving on to the options for button, which again refers to these green buttons at the bottom. The options are exactly the same as our push button options, except now on encoder two, we can control the behavior of the LED light that sits above the green buttons. Off turns it off, standard for standard functionality, and then EXT, which gives you the externally controlled LED status. So this is useful when you want to mirror or get feedback from the controlled software that you're using. 
And finally, for faders, we have some of the options that we saw before for the display control setting and command types. Whereas now, Encoder 4 gives you two options that are unique specifically to the faders and their response, allowing it to either snap and wait for physical and software positions to align or jump for immediate command execution, making instant adjustments in the software being controlled. Lastly, 5, 6, 7, and 8 are the same no matter which control element you're editing, assigning the MIDI channel, specifying controller or note numbers 0 to 127, and setting low and high value limits for encoders to manage output like preventing excessive volume. And there you have it. Now you know how to use the Fader Fox UC4 to its maximum capabilities.